Okay. So for these practice problems, they'd be good to attempt on your own. You get a healthy mix of calculation, and we'll throw a few proof problems in for practice as well. So what we will do is we will start with some computation ones. First one, we might say compute the following And then our first computation might be if A, that's what we'll do actually, with the sets, A is going to be equal to 0, 1, 2, B is going to be equal to 2, 3, 4, C is going to be equal to 1, 3, 5, and we'll have a big set x, which is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So what I'd like for you to compute, first of all, compute A union B union C. Next, I'd like you to compute A intersection B union with A intersection C union with B intersection C. Next, what I'd like to have computed is I would like for you to compute X symmetric difference with B intersection with C. And then finally, as we note that A, B, and C are all subsets of X, what I'd like for you to compute uh, is I'd like for you to compute A complement intersection with B complement intersection with C complement. Operating under the assumption where um, a complement, for example, is equal to x minus a. We're assuming that they're all living in the bigger set x. And I guess uh, beyond that, we also talked about Cartesian products, so it might be good to compute some kind of Cartesian product. So perhaps what we'll do is we will talk about a Cartesian product with b. That should be one you compute. And then let's do x Cartesian product with the empty set. And for the Cartesian product, you're just going to keep going uh, with that third element. So you'll make word triplets. If you do A Cartesian B Cartesian C, it's going to be kind of a lot to write out, but it'll be doable. So that's kind of a good, good amount of ones to compute. Next, what we might do is we might ask a question like, um, how many elements are in the following sets? Now, let me be careful here. I specifically mean unique elements. Uh, so if you just say a bunch of ones is a set, uh, we only count that as one element. So we might say if we have a set containing all x such that x is an integer and 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7. Let's set x such that x is odd. By odd, we implicitly assume it's an integer, right? That's a property that can only be true for integers. It doesn't make sense to say odd decimal if the decimal is not a... If it's like 3.2, it doesn't really make sense to say it's odd. So we're saying x is odd, and um, x is less than or equal to 3, or 3 is less than or equal to x, rather, and x is less than or equal to 13. 
C, we might ask the question about A Cartesian B, uh, sorry, A Cartesian C using the same set we had above, the same A and C. And you might say the set X such that X is a subset of A. Notice this is not strict subset, so we do allow equality here. And don't forget the empty set. The empty set is also a subset of every set. Now we're going to go with a couple of proof kind of questions as well for practice. For quality, make sure you show the two sets are subsets of each other. So you might show prove the empty set I'll do it this way. Prove that A Cartesian product with the empty set is equal to the empty set for all A. I might ask you to prove the distributive laws, right? If you have A intersection with B union C, this is equal to A intersection B union with A intersection C for sets A, B, and C. If I don't explicitly say it, these are all seem to be sets, right? And we'll also have you prove A union with B intersection C is equal to A union B intersection with A union C. I think that's good enough. Uh, best of luck, and I'll see you next time.